David's an MBA uh, optim life optimization coach. And I want you to put that in perspective, please. Uh, these are young individuals getting paid three, five, 10, 20 million, maybe on up. I, want, I don't want to exaggerate if I'm out of line with that, but a lot of money. And he coaches them. Uh, he's been on our podcast. You can look up those episodes. I'm sorry I don't have them top of mind. Maybe Kristen can post them in the chat. Uh, but Dave, you have a full 50 minutes, even though we got you started here a few minutes late. Uh, bring us home, buddy. It's good to have you on. Good to see you, if I can see you in a minute. Can you see me? All right. Now I can. Now, I, I will say this. Thank you for being on, not just because everything else I said, but the man is on vacation in Maui and said, <laughs> yeah, I can speak. So I appreciate it very much. Look at that. Hey, should okay. I just put that view? I mean, you guys probably don't want to look at me. Let's just look at this the whole time. <laughs> Go for it. I appreciate you doing this on your AK and thank your wife. For oh, it. absolutely. It's my fifth honeymoon. Me and my wife, my wife decided why I only have one honeymoon. Who made those rules? So now I, I appreciate you guys. I know this is the last talk of the day, so you're probably ready to get out of here. But I promise you, I will bring you home and I'll give you something good. And Chris, part of the, like the introducing to other people like John Gordon and Jordan, and you guys heard Chris Norton today. How amazing is he? Now I have to follow him up. That's like whoever wore 23 after Jordan has to follow Jordan up. So we'll give it our best shot here. But guys, I want you right here where you're at. Just pat yourself on the back. Just to feel good for what you're doing, for what you're going through, for being on right here at the start of 2022. I mean, you're on here for a reason and a purpose. You might have had a great year last year. You might have had a terrible year last year. It doesn't matter. This year is a new year. This year is the year of the breakthrough. I'm going to share my screen so I can show you some slides so you don't get too bored looking at my Hawaiian shirt. And just so you know, like this is literally all I packed. I let my wife pack my suitcase. Smart move for all you husbands. And all that's in there is Hawaiian shirts. So no other choice than this. All right, let me see. Can you guys see my screen? Give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen. Perfect. All right. So let me ask you a question here. If there was something that you would love to have in 2022, what would it be? And you guys can think about that. You can even put it in the chat if you want, but I'm just gonna jump to conclusions here that everybody would like control, right? Knowing what's gonna come from this year, knowing, knowing how well you're going to do, knowing how your family's gonna be, knowing if you're gonna stay healthy, knowing where you're gonna be at the end of this year. Control is something that's so abstract that we don't really, we're not really able to grasp. And we live in this ever-changing world, as we know. But the ones who are one step ahead of the competition, that are the ones that are able to make the breakthrough, you guys who, everybody makes resolutions. Admit it or not, we make some type of resolutions. And those resolutions, think about this right now. So you got your resolutions. 2022, you're excited. You're juiced up. Put them in a box. Imagine you have a box right there in front of you holding it. You stuff your resolutions in there, stuff them in, and they're contained in there. Your resolutions, think about this, or your goals, we make goals, not resolutions, they have a limit, right? They have a limit to where the top of the box is. You might have said, hey, I'm going to make $200,000 this year. I'm going to make $500,000. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Those are limitations placed upon us. So as we look into 2022, let me ask you another question. So we want to have control, okay? We want to be able to be one step ahead of the competition. And this can be done. We, I will give you a formula, a blueprint, that if you live in, which I heard you guys talking 10 minutes before we got on, on the last break, you guys were saying, hey, you know, the system that we have in place, that's what's been my success. The consistency, the habits, like that over time, is something that is going to build up and lead to your success, your sustainable, consistent success. So that's a ladder going up. Now, the question is, what's the biggest lie we tell ourselves? Think about it. What's the biggest lie we tell ourselves? You can put it in the chat. You can shout it out even. But I'm going to give you the answer here for sake of time. I won't let you just ponder it. It's potential, right? That box with the goals, that box with the resolutions, it's potential. But potential means absolutely nothing. Potential is a bunch of BS. I've been around a lot of NBA players. I've been around $3.2 billion in contract earnings of NBA players. I've seen these guys come out of college that 
and they got the potential to be the best that ever played. Just so much potential put upon them in their busts because potential doesn't mean anything. Potential does not mean anything unless you actualize it. Potential is just a term that other, other people place upon us to limit us or ourselves. We limit ourselves. We make these goals and we're like, yeah, but, but, but that guy can do it. Like he, he can make so much more. He can be so much more successful than me, but not me. Why me? It's not a why me. It's a why not me. So we're going to bust through potential. Because think about that. When you were a kid, let's think about your dreams, or when you're coming out of college, your dreams of potential, maybe you wanted to be an astronaut. I don't know why, but maybe you did. But somebody along the way probably told you, nah, go for the safe bet. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe you grew up in a small town in the middle of nowhere, cornfields of Iowa, and you weren't very athletic. You had a vertical leap of about that much, and you wanted to play in the NBA, and you poured every waking minute into doing so. Does that sound like anybody's story? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sounds a little bit too real. I see some hands going up. I love it. So that's what I wanted to do. And I, I, I wasn't very gifted, being honest. I was one of those players that thought I was a lot better than I was. But I grinded my way to play college basketball. And, and I'm playing professionally overseas. And when I say professionally, it sounds really cool. But it's more like the, uh, the Will Ferrell semi-pro type of league. More like a joke of a league than it is actual professional basketball. And, and I, I'm still thinking I'm going to the NBA. Like I'm doing two-a-days film study. Like I'm locked in. Now my teammates are partying, literally partying at halftime. They could care less about the games. I'm going to the NBA. So I get cut from this team, a second division team in the middle of nowhere, Northern Basque region of Spain. They don't even know what basketball is really over there. So think about that moment in your life. Maybe you were fired. Maybe your, your goal, your dream was taken right out from under you. Think about that. That's pain. That hurts. I poured all of my life. No backup plan. Yeah, where were my parents on that one? No backup plan taken away, basically turned upside down and my face rubbed in the dirt. So I go back home and I'm licking my wounds, living on my parents' recliner chair and about six months and like just feeling bad for myself. I didn't know where to go. My mom would always say these inspirational, motivational quotes and it was usually whatever mom, in one ear, out the other ear. I'm, no, I'm not listening. But she said this one that stood with me, and I remember vividly where I was, kicked back in the recliner. She was doing dishes. She said, David, when one door closes, four open in an entire beachfront patio overlooking the ocean. And it caught me off guard. I was like, no, what? what? I thought it was this one door, one door. What's this four doors in a beachfront patio? But what she was saying and implying was, hey, when a door closes, that's just opening you up to opportunity to come. Everything that you poured into your life to this moment, to this moment, it's just shutting your face is not to be thrown away, but it was to teach me what my true purpose was to be able to coach players that had more God given ability to athleticism and seven foot height to play in the NBA, not for myself. So that's when I made this life pivot. I was going to do everything I could to get into the NBA. If only I had a connection, I had none. I didn't know anybody in the NBA. So what did I do? I hand wrote a letter to every NBA GM. Wrote out handwritten letter, sent it to them. And I was just waiting, checking the mail every single day. I know something's coming. Nothing came. It was a month and a half later, I got a phone call from the GM of the Los Angeles Clippers at the time, Gary Sachs. And it was, you know, it was a quick call. One of those just normal calls. Basically, it was a good luck with the rest of your life. He was just being extremely nice for getting back to me. And he did say at the end of it, though, if you're ever out in L.A., look me up, we'll grab coffee. And I took that as, hey, I'm coming out there next week. So I spent all my money, stole some of my parents' money, booked a ticket to be out there in L.A. to pretend that I had a basketball camp. I didn't want to look desperate, but I studied up for this meeting. I was so prepared for it. We had this meeting. We hit it off. And every NBA connection that I've ever gotten stemmed from Gary Sachs, from being it, just taking that risk, stepping out not knowing where I was going to fall and being able to make that relationship spread into all my MBA connections. Now, if I, if I hadn't taken that chance, I'd have been at that same place, nothing lost. So I'm saying like, if you want something big to happen, you're gonna have to bet on yourself. You're gonna have to take a leap of faith without knowing where you're going to land. But the worst case scenario is you're at the same spot you're at. So I, I'm doing these basketball camps. I custom made this basketball from China with this line down the center so you can see the shooting rotation on it all i could do is shoot that's all i could do had them made in china 
yeah, terrible leather when they actually turned out, sent to the Oakland seaport. I'd pop in my car, drive 29 hours from Kansas City to Oakland. I spend the next five years of my life driving around the country, doing basketball camps for anybody that would take me in, sleeping in well-lit Walmart car parking lots, crashing on friends' couches who didn't even know I was their friend, <laughs> literally just doing basketball camps everywhere and anywhere. Fast forward five and a half years, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. I wake up to an email in my inbox that says Brooklyn Nets shooting coach. And I didn't know anybody from Brooklyn, so I'm thinking this has gotta be spam. So I had that little mark, that check mark, I was gonna delete it, opened it up the next week, I'm the shooting coach for the Brooklyn Nets. I had achieved my breakthrough. I made it to the NBA. Just give me a round of applause here, a round of applause. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hold that thought. We're gonna wrap that one up at the end, okay? So hold that and remember right where we're at there, Brooklyn Nets shooting coach, we're going to wrap it up in the end. But you guys aren't here to just to hear my life story. Let's just take a, take a peek at, at, at this guy who had a, uh, quite the influence on the NBA. Let's see. So this little baby face guy is Steph Curry. You've probably heard of him, I'm assuming. Now here, when he was coming out of college, talking about potential, this is what the NBA scouts said about him. These NBAs, this is what they're paid to do. Big bucks to, to find the next talent. Steph Curry, not a true point guard, out of control at times, bad shot selection, didn't really have a position, could he defend, wasn't very laterally quick, very limited upside, uh, probably a backup player, maybe a fringe starter, average athleticism, average size, average wingspan, frail frame, relies too heavily on the outside shot. Yeah, I hope that scout was fired. How'd that work out for them? Think about this. Steph Curry literally changes the entire sport of basketball. He did. People shoot threes. All teams want three-point shooters because of this guy. Now, if he would have looked at this and said, well, okay, this NBA scout, he's very wise. He knows what he's talking about. These are my limitations. This is my potential. I have to live in this. No, we live in the stories that we create. We create our own potential. Potential, you don't have to have a lid on the box. And I'm going to show you that today because we're here to find a breakthrough. But breakthroughs, hold on real quick. See that guy? That's a little superstar. Look at that headband. I had swag back then even. Wow. Hawaiian shirts now, headbands and short shorts back then. <laughs> we're here to find a breakthrough. And breakthroughs are very abstract. It's, a, it's this term like, uh, what's it really mean? Like, it sounds cool. Like, yeah, give me a breakthrough. But they're just these little, you know, strokes of luck, happy accident. You're like, yeah, I wish I could recreate this, but I don't really know how. But there is a tried and true formula that I've put together through 12 years of working with NBA players, coaches, entrepreneurs, actors, all the top high performers to see and learn and study what they do to help them be successful. And this is the formula that I've came up with. And I'm telling you, if you live in this formula, if you add this to your daily routine and it is seamless to add, I'm not saying, you know what, your morning routine has to last till 2.30 p.m. and then you're gonna start your evening routine and you have to drink apple cider vinegar with a bunch of cayenne pepper. No, that's not it. This is seamless to add in there. And here's the formula. So this is, a, this is a take notes. If you have a pen and a paper, bonus points for you. Computer or phone, you can get very distracted. Trust me, I know I've been on many Zoom calls where I look at pop-up emails and stuff like that. No, let's go pen and paper mode. Confidence plus cooperation plus service plus purpose equals the breakthrough mode. This is when you are living in the breakthrough mode, when these breakthroughs become things that you control, that you schedule. You're not dictated by the circumstances and situations around you. You're not waiting for these little happy accidents to happen. You're taking the upper hand and you're creating these breakthroughs. So we're going to go through each point and I'm going to give you an action, something that you can actually do on a daily basis. Very quick, very easy to do. Put it into your day where you will live in all four of these points. And I'm not telling you that your breakthrough is going to come tomorrow. It's not. Like, you're not going to have shiny, pearly white teeth if you brush your teeth one time. Like, it just won't happen. It's a consistent basis day after day after day. All right. So we ready to dive in? Everybody still with me? 
raise your hands, shoot your hands up there. Maybe, you know, raise the roof. I don't know. Some, but let's get going here. Okay. So it all starts with who. So the confidence piece goes with who. The question of who are you? I know Simon Sinek likes to talk about it starts with why, but I, I disagree. I think he's wrong. It starts with who, knowing who you are at the core. And we can all look around this Zoom room and we can see a lot of success. We celebrate success on the exterior. We celebrate, man, a great year, your resume, your stats. If you're an NBA player, you're killing it. But that is just the tip of the iceberg of what true confidence is about. True confidence is understanding your self-awareness, who you are at the core. If you take all of that away, if you take all of it away, who are you? And I learned this from this guy right here, Jeremy Lin, went through this time called Lin's Sanity. You East Coasters probably remember this time back in 2012, and Jeremy took over the NBA. Now, he came out of complete obscurity, so nobody knew who he was. He was three days away from getting cut. He was living on his, his teammate's couch, three days away from getting cut. Now, there was like 12 things that had to happen for him to get in the game that night. Literally, it was crazy. So Jeremy gets in and he takes advantage of the opportunity he'd been preparing for and he's killing it. He's going for game winners, 30 point games. He's juking and jiving Kobe like he is dominating. He is the number one trending thing in the world. Think about that. If you wake up tomorrow morning and you see your name on all these newspapers, Time Magazine, social media, you got like 8 billion followers, TikTok, you're killing it. You're all over the place. Be pretty nice, right? But if Jeremy was being honest with you, He'd tell you he would never want to go through this situation again, because instead of understanding who he was and, un and just being the appreciation for this moment, he was living in the what ifs. What if I can't keep this up? What will people think of me? What if I can't keep going at this pace? What if I don't keep earning more next month? What if I don't have a better year this year than last year? What if this, 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 this? And it drives us nuts. It's those little thoughts that come into our mind, those negative thoughts, those questioning, questioning ourselves thoughts. And one of the biggest breakthroughs I've ever seen in my career is watching Jeremy actually come into his own, where he shed that and knowing that he stands for so much more. Understanding that he stands for his Taiwanese people, he stands for his faith in Jesus, and he stands for thinking he's a gourmet chef in the kitchen. That's highly debatable, but, but that's one thing he stands for. So what I'm saying is your self-awareness depends on who you are, not what you do, not what you are doing, not what your, the world says your success is. That's great, but that's only a byproduct of knowing yourself first. And when was the last time that you met somebody, random stranger, think about this. Usually when you meet them, they say, hey, hey, nice, nice to meet you. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? That's how we define people. That's how we judge people from the start. But when was the last time where you met somebody who said, hey, who are you? Who are you? Not, not, not what your business card says, but who are you? So I want you guys, I'm gonna give you a minute to do this. Write down on a piece of paper. I want you to write down three words, three words that can define you, that you want to live in this year. That if you could consistently wake up and see these three words every single day and live in these three things, you know at the end of the year, you would be a better version of yourself. So I'm using the words, my three words of the year is courageous, Make sure I got these right, wrote these down. Courageous, content, and charismatic. Courageous, I wanna be willing to take chances. I wanna be courageous. Content is not meaning, hey, I'm gonna take it easy. I wanna know that I'm on this journey, but I'm enjoying the journey. Not just enjoying the journey, but be content with every single step of the process. And charismatic, I wanna show up consistently charismatic. I wanna show up every day with a smile on my face, with energy, with joy, so it can be infectious to others. Now, your words don't all have to start with the same letter. Just easier for me to do. I kind of like those alliterations. I think that's what it's called. Kind of like Chris said that uh, awoken is a word. Yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's Chris's word for the year. <laughs> so three words that can define you that say who you are. Because you are never going to be defined by what your business card says, that's a byproduct. So it's just like we talked, like you guys were talking about, you focus on the system and the process, it leads to the results. Nobody, you can't focus on the results 
and just expect them to happen. You can't focus on the what you want to be without knowing who you are. Like I tell my NBA players, like we don't even track stats. Because if you try to go for stats, you're going to drive yourself nuts. If you try to go for, yeah, you have these goals, but focus daily on the process and the system you guys have created. All right. Take about 30 seconds to write those down. I'll give you a little break. You can give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Awesome. And you don't have to have them exactly right now. I will let you change them, believe it or not. Okay, I'm gonna see a few more eyes up here and we'll get it. If you haven't, if you haven't seen Lynn Sanity, great documentary, is incredible. Go check it out. I could give you a bunch of Netflix recommendations, but we'll keep it to the talk we're talking about. Give you about 10 more seconds. As I listen to these waves crash in, it's rough. It's rough, guys. All right, let's keep it rolling. You guys can come back to that afterwards. Second piece. So we have our confidence is the who. Confidence is the who. The second piece, if you remember, is the cooperation. This is determining your where, the people around you, the team around you. Now, just give me a show of hands. Has anybody ever been to Cat's Deli in New York City? If you're East Coast and you've been in New York City, I highly recommend it. It, it literally is a life changing there i see some hands up a life-changing experience now they at cat's deli they have this reuben sandwich which is like oh taste bud heaven you know if you know you know what i'm talking about let me break down the ingredients for you first rye bread i despise rye bread i cannot i do not like it swiss cheese that stinks that's gross pastrami ugh, no and sauerkraut mm, i don't want to touch it all of those ingredients by themselves I don't want any part of, but when you put them together, when you put this group of misfits together that doesn't even make sense, it's this just heavenly taste. It's amazing how it works in unison together. These misfits, that's what we are, guys. The best teams are a group of misfits. It's not just the same people with the like-minded thoughts, the yes men, it's the different people. Think about the 98 Bulls. You remember Michael Jordan and his team. You got Jordan, the best scorer. Scotty Pippen, the best sidekick. Steve Kerr, the best shooter. Dennis Rodman, the best crazy man. You don't know what he's going to do or what hair color he's going to show, whether he's going to get out of the game or not. He's that just, he's the misfit piece that puts it all together. And that's what the best teams are. So often we are told we are weaknesses, right? You, you kind of defined by it. People know what their weakness is. But I'm here to say those are just a compliments wish list for, for what the team around us. Think about it. Different strengths with different strengths make this ultimate team. So don't focus on your weaknesses, focus on your strengths and do the best you can in that specific strength. So these guys right here, Steve Kerr, Steph Curry, we talked about Curry, it's a Golden State Warriors. And I was blessed to be able to spend time with the Warriors before they became the Warriors. And for you East Coasters, I know I keep coming back, these they're like the New York Jets of the NBA. They could just never win. That's who they were before Curry got there. So I'm invited to these preseason practices, and there was this talk going around that the Warriors were going to try something different. They were going to start shooting a ton of threes. Didn't happen in the NBA. It was usually throw it down into Shaquille O'Neal, the big man, and let him go to work on the low block. But they were going to change the game. They had Curry, this guy who didn't really make sense in the NBA. They had another guy named Draymond Green. Now, you didn't really know what position he was. Was he a guard? Was he a forward? It wasn't going to work. He just didn't have a position. So I go to these practices thinking in my mind, there's going to be all this crazy, cool, three-point shooting, creative play. And as an NBA trainer, I'm like, all right, think about all these secrets I'm going to take back to my players. I'm going to look really cool with all these new drills I have. But what I see for the first hour of every single practice, every single one, was form shooting, passing, ball handling, and footwork. The boring basics, the boring fundamentals. This team that was supposed to change the way the game was played was actually focusing on the boring basics. Like what? Think, think about that in your own life. Like you have all these big goals, these big aspirations, but are you willing to focus on the boring basics? 80% of your day 
is habitual for all of us. Can you embrace these boring habits? I've made it a rule in my life that I know I am always going to stand out above others because I'm willing to do the things that other people aren't willing to do. If you embrace that, if you say, hey, most people don't want to do this because it sucks, because it's hard, and you embrace it, you're going to be more successful because most people will give up. Most people will give in. So here's this great team before they're a great team with these misfits, different pieces together, focusing on the fundamentals every single day. And they just, the thing that really stood out is they had this banner above the hoop. When you walk into the practice facility, you see this massive banner and it just says joy, J-O-Y. That's all it said, joy. So subconsciously, when you walk under the court, everybody knew they were going to come to practice. They knew they were going to come to work with joy, with joy for going to work together, with joy for focusing on the fundamentals, for joy, with joy for taking this risk and betting on themselves to stand out. And they won the NBA championship that year. They won the NBA championship. Think about the Jets winning the Super Bowl. They won it. They proved everybody wrong. The NBA has been changed and they did it consistently focusing on those fundamentals day after day after day. In the following year, they had the best record in NBA history. Wow. Think about that. A group of misfits that everybody counted out. They took a risk. They bet on themselves. They focused on the fundamentals with joy. What if you guys could do that? What if you could do that? with The people around you. Like think about the people that you love to be around. Let me ask you this question. Do you show up at work, whether it's a Zoom or it's in person, and, and you're saying, you know what, I'm excited to go to work with this person over here who's just really negative, always complaining, really brings down the energy. I just love being around that person. No, nobody does. So why be that person? I got time to the opportunity to spend time with Dabo Sweeney. You guys know who that is? He's a Clemson football coach. And a friend of mine, John Gordon, actually brought me down there. And this is a massive game they were about to play. And Dabo gave me 45 minutes over breakfast and just asked me questions. Was this present with me? He was one of those guys. And I just walked away. I was like, man, I want to be like that guy. You know those people that you're around? You're like, I just need a little bit more of him in my life. A little bit more of that person in my life. I want you guys to think about that. And I want you to write that down. I want you to write down the type of person, it can be one, it can be two. You can even have specific names, if you can think of somebody right now, that you want to add to your team. If you could add some type of person to your team, maybe it's an encourager. Maybe it's somebody who's very structured and organized. I just added somebody like that to my team and it's made my life so much easier. Who would that person be? What type of person do you want to add to your team? Don't let it just be a yes man. Most people will say, hey, you know what? I'm going to check in with my support team. Let me get with my support group. That's great. But what is a support group going to always tell you? Oh, it's fine. It's okay. Keep doing what you're doing. It's like the American Idol singer who brings her family there. Oh, the best thing. He's the best singer I've ever heard. And then you suck. Yeah, it, it support's great. But also have people that challenge you. That's why I have these Ed Milets, these John Gordons, Chris Nortons, Jordan Montgomery's in my life. Because I know, hey, they're going to challenge me. So if I say, hey, this year I'm going to develop a TV show, which I'm doing, they're like, oh, yeah, go get it. Go do it. Instead of being, nah, you're not going to do it. Nah, there's no way. They'll challenge me and they'll also support me. So when I'm down, I know that I can come to them and they'll give me the truth. And that's what you want. Your challenge and support team. That's what great leaders do. So think about the type of person that you want to add to your life. I'll give you 20 seconds, 30 seconds to do so. And then just start thinking about, you know, the people that you want on your challenge and support team. I put Chris down there. I know I can check in with him anytime and he'll, he'll shoot it to me straight. I don't know if it's just because of the Boston and that's what's in them. They don't, they don't have time to just to be just, just, you know, give people BS. They just shoot it to you straight. But I love that. It's what you need. A couple more seconds and we'll head on to the third quarter. And this is something that you can keep with you to be on like one piece of paper, have it somewhere you can see every single day. And it's just a check-in. 
because if you have these things that track tracking things, as you guys know, that's the way for you to actually know if it's you're doing it. Just if you're seeing it too, you're seeing like, hey, these are the three words I want to live in. Because people get really excited at the start of the year. But when it comes March and April and it's been three, four months in, it's like, ugh, the monotony. Huh, be way ahead of the monotony. All right, let's keep this thing rocking. So we have our confidence, the who. We have our cooperation, the where. Who and where. We know who we are. We know the team that we're with. Now the question is the what. Actualizing the what. So if you know who you are, you know where your team is, what are you doing? And if you are doing what you're doing for a bottom line, for a dollar amount, for social media likes, for just everybody thinking that you're the best that there is, you're going to be miserable. Nobody in the history of ever, when they were on their deathbed, looked and just said, you know what? I got a massive bank account. I did nothing for anybody else, but I really made my money just so all for me was ever content with their life. I've been around a lot of billionaires. A lot of people with a ton of money and some of them are the most miserable people. Think about Steve Jobs dying on his deathbed, lonely and miserable. You, nobody is going to find contentment. You're not going to be that first one. So the question is, what are you doing? And the what is service, service. And when I say service, I know everybody feels like, ah, oh, service. Yeah, we've heard this. And it's, you know, I, I help out at the local food bank and, and all this. And that's great. Keep doing that. But true service, true genuine service is about giving your time and energy when it's not convenient for you. It's about when somebody needs you and you have this Google calendar filled up with all these colors and all these meetings and all these Zooms and all this schedule, your schedule, your schedule, your schedule. But you have to take a break because somebody needs you. And that's so real. Guys, at a time in the world that uncertainty yeah, it certainly reigns over. Like, we don't know what people are going through. I wish I would have known this years ago. I'm, the, I'm probably the worst at this. And this is a daily practice for me. My wife will tell you this. Like, I'm so like, I want to go, go, go. Do, do, do. Type A, type A. Got this, 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 and this. But if I'd have known it this years ago, and, and I'm sure you guys probably all know someone who's gone through mental health and, and it potentially could have saved one of my friend's life. I did not know he was struggling. He was reaching out to me, calling out to me. And I just, did, I just didn't see it because I was too into myself. So this service, giving your time and energy and who you are is, is, is so, so real. And I'm gonna tell you a story of, of one way that I, that I realized it in my life is when I was coaching with the Brooklyn Nets, I just got on. I was two weeks on with the Nets. And they were owned by this guy right here. This picture is Mikhail Prokhorov. Mikhail is a Russian billionaire oil tycoon guy who owned the Nets. And he was probably tied in with the Russian mafia. Keep that in the Zoom room for my safety if that ever gets out. Probably was. So nobody really got to meet with Mikhail. Nobody on the team. It's kind of almost like this mythical figure. And I get called in to meet with him. We're at practice. I get called in to meet with him. I'm like, no, no I'm at practice. I, I got to stay at practice because I didn't really know my team. I didn't know the coaches. I was trying to, you know, fit in. I was trying to get to know people. And the GM's like, no, when Mikel calls, you go. So they pick me up in this car, this big black Escalade. They shuttle me down to Manhattan to the Four Seasons. I literally, it's like a James Bond experience. I kid you not. They take me behind this like waterfall thing and shoot me up to the top, this penthouse in the top of Four Seasons. And I'm sitting there waiting for Mikhail. I'm thinking like, okay, because he brought me on. He was really big into shooting. So I was like, okay, what am I going to say? How I teach players? And he comes in about 9 a.m., 30 minutes later, and he's in these cutoff shirt and, and shorts and he's just looming over me this massive big guy he's like six seven he looks down on me he says okay now we train in a thick russian accent and like all right cool now we train so he takes me into this other room just me and him and he puts me through two hours of what's called teesco teesco is a tibetan martial arts yeah like literally eight people in the world probably do it i had no idea what it was but it was not easy you're balancing on these med balls I'm like tapping tennis balls against the wall while he's pushing me and making sure I stay on balance. It wasn't easy. And then at one point he says, okay, now let me show you how we use it for self-defense. Go, all right. He says, okay, strike me. What? Can we st strike you? Yes, strike me. So I kind of give this, you know, this, this is half little, you know, right hook. And within half a second, he puts me in this sleeper hold, this death hold. He has my head right here locked in. I'm thinking, man, I, if I can only get out of here alive, 
what felt like a minute was probably 15 seconds. He finally lets me go, pats me on the back. He says, I like you. Good job. Good job. And I just wanted to get out of there as fast as I could because I didn't know what was coming next. Like this guy's mafia tie just having me in a headlock could have snapped my neck. Nobody would have ever known. Get me the heck out of here. So I get out of there, back in the car, and they're taking me back to practice. And whew, man, I survived. All I was caring about was I survived, thankfully. But then it hit me right when I was rolling back up to practice. I was thinking, you know what? I just had this amazing opportunity. Sure, it was a difficult opportunity. It was something I didn't want to be in. I wanted to get through it. But if I would have asked Mikel questions, I could have learned from him and taken back this information to give to my coaches, to give to my team who had no idea who this owner who ran the team actually was. But instead of thinking about the others serving others through my pain, through my struggle that I was going through, I was thinking to myself, I was like, how can I survive? So the mindset shift I want you guys to be able to make here in this service mode, it's not all about you. It's not just about surviving. It's about thriving. Any difficult situation thrown your way, good news. You've got through every single one so far. You're going to get through the next one. But the ones that are just waiting, just surviving, they thought like, oh, 2020 is going to be the year. Nope. Oh, 2021, everything's going to be back to normal. Nope. 2022, probably not. Just giving you a little insight, probably won't. But if you're just waiting and you're just trying to survive, it's never going to happen. You thrive through difficult situations. Because let me tell you this too, if something difficult happens to you, and Chris Norton is great. He is a prime example of this. What happened to him, paralyzed, never walk again. You guys all know the story. But instead of looking at it as like, man, woe is me. Or any difficult situation in your life, woe is me. No, you learn and grow from it. And the bonus is you get to help somebody who's going to go through that exact same situation and you get to lead them. You get to show them they can do it with joy and with purpose. So the actualizing the what is true, genuine service, giving your time and energy when it's not convenient for you. Looking at situations of survival when it gets hard, when you can't see the next day ahead, you're trying to keep your head above water. You got kids running all over the place. They're going to school. You got to drop them off. You got to homeschool them. You're trying to get your stuff done. You're not just surviving, you're thriving. That's what true service is about. So I want you guys to write down, and here's what I do. One of the biggest things that I ever did in my life, I did it started three years ago, I called it the big three. And I would text, and I do it every day, I text or send a video message to three people in my phone who I haven't talked to for a while. And it's just a note of encouragement, say, hey, Hope you're doing well. I'm thinking about you this morning. If there's anything that I can do for you, just let me know. I'm always in your corner. Just letting them know you're there for them. And some of the responses I've gotten have literally been life-changing. People that I wouldn't expect it from. I said, man, thank you so much for this. I can't even tell you how low I was feeling. And it's just the impact that has when other people know that you're thinking of them. Because all we want to do at the end of the day is be appreciated. That's the number one driving factor of motivation within companies appreciation. Be that person who reaches out and encourages others. Because let me tell you, people aren't going to be that person for you. Very few people do that to me, but I'm going to consistently do it to three people and it could change their lives. So take that note down, write down, I'll give you 20, 20, 30 seconds, write down three people in your life who after this talk, you're going to text, video message, or call just to check in on just to let you know, let them know that you are in their corner. Who are those three people going to be? And you're going to take action. Take action and actually do it. Make that a habit. It literally takes 25 seconds. Just copy and paste the same message every morning if you want. So easy. So easy to do. And I heard you guys talking about it earlier. It was action. Like I made changes because I took action. Took action. That's, that's the biggest disconnect that we have. People will take in all this knowledge, listen to podcasts, read books. Oh, that's great. Knowing is, is awesome, but knowing is only the first step. Doing, doing, actually doing, taking action. All right, give you a couple more seconds and we'll roll in to the last phase and we'll wrap this thing up and land this plane and get you guys out of here and me on the beach with my toes in the sand. Perfect, perfect. <clears throat> Okay, so we have, look at this guy. We have confidence is the who, cooperation is the where, 
Service is the what in the last point, the last part of the formula is purpose. This is now we get to the why. So the, the understanding here, first and foremost, is not, it's not necessarily about what you are doing. It's about who you're doing it for. So to find your why, to find your purpose, you don't have to go on these big ayahuasca retreats or go into the mountains with the monks. Like, nah, I mean, if that's your thing, cool. More power to you, but you don't have to do that. Uh, this guy right here, this guy's name is Jiro. If you haven't watched the documentary, Jiro Does Sushi or Jiro Dreams of Sushi, yeah, I see you. I see you giving the thumbs up. It's incredible. It's fascinating. I'm a sushi nut. I would like to say that I am obsessed with sushi, obsessed. And when you say the word obsessed, you say, you know what? I'm obsessed with the mission. I'm, I'm obsessed with the passion that I have. Most people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, David. 80, 20. Remember, 80, balance, 80, 20. No, that's B, balance is BS. 80, 20 is just what society tells us so we can become busy with all these things, going to yoga, doing all this kind of stuff that we don't really need. I don't want to be 80, 20 balanced, loving my wife. I don't want to be 80, 20 on the mission I'm on. No, obsessed is about deciding what you want to do, your most importance, your essentials, and focusing on them and not letting all this noise and this FOMO and these distractions interfere to create this quote unquote balance. So this guy, Jiro, I'm obsessed with sushi, best sushi maker in the world he, right here. Now, I'd be lying if, if I told you I didn't take, I got offered the job to consult for the Japanese basketball league years ago. And one of the main reasons I took it was because I could have the best sushi. Like if you've been to Japan, you know the food is just different. Like you can go to 7-Eleven over there and have a gourmet meal. I kid you not. That's another one. If you know, you know. So I'll go over there three days prior because I want to get sushi from this guy. Why not have the best of the best? He's tough to find. I spend the first two days going all throughout the city of Tokyo. Now, this Tokyo train system is like it's it's incredibly difficult. I still can't figure it out. I've been there like 20 times. Day three, my final free day, I finally get this tip of where he's at. And his place is in the middle of the city underneath a train station. Like, how cool is that? Two stories underneath a train station. So one thing you got to understand about Japanese culture is they don't really like confrontation. I, they, have, they pack it in like sardines on the trains. I've never seen a fight. I've never seen anybody shove or push. If that's in New York or Boston, man, people are getting elbows to the chin daily. But not in Japan. They don't like confrontation. So I go down these two stories. I'm going to take this selfie in front of Jiro's place. Because, I mean, if it, if, if it happens on Instagram, it's obviously real life. I don't really have to tell my friends I didn't go. If they get this picture, they think I did. Perception. But when I pull my phone up, the guard who's standing there slaps my hand down. Like, that's big to do that in Japan. That's big. He slaps my hand down. So you couldn't even take a picture in front of the guy's place. Made it even cooler. I, I was not going to give up. So the next morning, I had to be on court at 9 a.m. My last chance, there's this thing called the Shijiki Fish Market. It's the most famous fish market in the world. It's massive. You got to get there at 4 a.m. to get in. They start auctioning off these tunas. It, look that up crazy. Tuna's going for like $3,000 to $5,000, huge. So I've got my phone out. You know, I got the Google. I got this image up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to find this guy because if this is the place where you get the freshest fish, the best sushi maker in the world, he's going to be coming here. So I'm looking, I'm scanning, and I swear I'm about 97% sure that it was him. Now, to be fair, old Japanese men kind of all look the same, but I thought this was him. I was locked in. So I start following him around. And there's just lines and lines and lines just going so deep, like this, probably the size of Rhode Island itself of all these fish markets. They look the same to me. This guy's going, he's picking up a fish. He's touching it feeling it, smelling it, even putting it up to his ear, listening to it, all this, this weird routine he had. He put it down, walked to the next one, same thing, same routine, to the next one and the next one. We're about an hour in. I'm like, dude, just pick a fish already. I got to get going. Finally, he picks up this fish, does the routine, and that's the one he decides. That's the fish this guy chose the best sushi maker in the world was obsessed with finding the freshest best fish that he could serve at his sushi restaurant that night not for himself dude already had a documentary old as could be probably made a ton of money but he was obsessed with his passion to bring others joy 
Think about that. Are you obsessed with what you are doing to bring others joy? It doesn't mean you have to go be in a rock band or write a ton of books. It doesn't, have, it doesn't mean that. Are you obsessed in the spot you are at right now to bring other people joy? Even if you're doing something you don't necessarily like to do and don't feel like it's, it's your actual purposely passion, you are on a purpose. If you have kids and you show up every single day to work, working your butt off and you come home, you have a smile on your face, you're completely present, not scrolling through your phone at night, but completely actually present. Like that's purpose. It's not about the what you do, but it's about what you do for who you're doing it for. That's when your purpose, and I, I, love, I love seeing people obsessed. Like I, even just going down to the, the local coffee store, you know, you all came across that barista who's just so, so obsessed with making that perfect cup. He's like, you know, this bean, it was roasted in Honduras at 37 degrees temperature and the Fahrenheit. And like, it's awesome. It's awesome. I don't care what you do, but do it with all you have because that obsession, that passion is going to bring other people joy. That's when you know you're living in your why. And that, that is the last part of the breakthrough formula. And I want you to write that down. I want you to write down, what do you want to be all in on this year? All in, not half in, not lukewarm, all in, obsessed with. Is it gonna be loving your spouse even more? Spending more time, intentional time. There's a difference between time and intentional time with your kids, with your family, doing what you do, showing up every day with joy, high-fiving others at the office because you want to be that infectious joy encourager to others. What, what are you going to be all in on this year? Take a second, write that down, think about it, come back to this, spend more time on it, reflecting, and we're going to land this ship and bring it in for the finish. Give you a couple more seconds. I actually did not get to his place, but I got to his son's place. I talked my way in to get into his son's place. Unbelievable sushi. It's incredible. And also another point, if you're going to, if you're going to do something important, do not spend hours at a fish market because you're going to smell like fish for the next two weeks. But yeah, that happened. All right, let's lay in this thing, guys. To recap, <clears throat> Confidence plus cooperation plus service plus purpose. The who, who you are at the core, the where, the people around you, the team around you, the what, the true genuine service that you are giving to others, and the purpose, who you're doing it for. You are living in the breakthrough mode. Now, this is when you're taking action and controlling your breakthroughs. You're not waiting for circumstances and situations to hit you. Happy little accidents are gone. But I can't tell you exactly when they're going to happen. But I can tell you, if you live in this daily, they're going to happen. They're going to happen consistently. They're going to continue to happen. If you don't live in this, they will continue to be those strokes of luck. But, 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 but what, if, what if you think you have your breakthrough and it's not actually your breakthrough? That's a great question. What if you make it to the Brooklyn Nets and you take them from 28th in the league in three-point shooting to second in the league, having all this pub, all this media on you, saying you're the next hot up-and-coming young coach, the GM saying three-year deal, we're going to lock you in for a long term. You had found your breakthrough. You were just killing it. And then a new head coach comes on at the end of the year and wipes out the whole staff. Door shut again. Fired. Think about that. I worked my whole I, five years living out of my car to get that job, killed it in the job, thought I was in, fired. All of it taken away again. But what did that great philosopher, my mom, say? When one door closes, four open in an entire beachfront patio overlooking the ocean. And if I had still been in Brooklyn, I would have never been able to meet my amazing wife, I'm, she's the love of my life. Literally, I would have never been able to meet her. I wouldn't have been able to write books. I wouldn't have been able to be here with you guys speaking right now. I wouldn't be able to actually be in my passion, in my purpose, in my mission that I'm on right now. I'd have been stuck in a basketball court. And we live in Marina Del Rey, literally with a door overlooking the ocean. It's just crazy how that works. So everything you do is setting you up for your breakthrough to come when you live in this breakthrough mode. And the last 
conviction, final conviction I want to leave you with. Everybody get out their phones. You got your phone on you. In your calendar, we're going to look at our calendars. Or you can just take a little note what you're going to do tomorrow. I want you to write down. So I want you to see this when you look at your calendar tomorrow. Write the word choice down. Just the word choice. Because that is the superhero power we all have is the power of choice. You have so many choices you're gonna make. Every morning when you wake up, you get the ability to choose. Choose how you view the day. Choose how you view every interaction. Everything that is happening to you is the power of choice. It's like in the movie, Batman, that guy Two-Face. He's got the coin. If you have a coin with you, flip it, flip it. If it lands on heads in the show, in the movie, something good happens. If it lands on tails, it's going to be a bad day. Something terrible happens. But guys, you're playing with a two-sided head coin. You flip it, it lands on heads. That's great. That little, that little momentum, momentum builds momentum. The compounding effect of momentum is the eighth wonder of the world. It lands on tails, you get the choice. It's actually a bigger win. Because if you fail at something, you've all heard it. If you fail, it's the greatest teacher. And we all say it, it's cliche. But literally think about the times you've gone through something difficult and you've overcame it. You come out the other side even better. It's like being in that, that, that coal dropped into the furnace. And the longer that it sits in that furnace, the shinier the diamond is on the other side. And also through those failures, those difficult situations, you teach others that are going to go through that same thing. I know it sucks, but you are literally playing with a two-sided head, head-sided coin that power of choice. So you are no longer, when you understand this, you are no longer searching for breakthroughs. You are no longer hoping for breakthroughs. You're no longer just crossing your fingers and just wondering when that breakthrough is going to happen. You literally actually become the breakthrough. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate you hanging in there with me. There we go. Hey. All right, I'm back. David, thank you much. We are spent. David, I appreciate you. I know 100% certain that the beach is calling you. Hey, guys, thank you. If you have any questions, you can hit me at any time. If you ever want more coaching like this, I do a Be The Breakthrough coaching. You can just look it up. Just shoot me an email at david at davidnurse.com, and I can get you all the information for sure. When he gets home from Maui. When I get home from Maui, yes. Unfortunately, right. it's Monday. Got to go back. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks, buddy. We'll see you soon. Appreciate, Appreciate you. It. Have Bye. a great trip.